type of that. And uh, they're, they're wanting folks to uh, make sure that they uh, complete the census. Uh, just read a, a wee bit of the text. Uh, the 2021 census is almost here. As you know, census data is critical to decision makers and Canadians from coast to coast. In addition to informing public policy, census data are uh, vital for planning schools, hospitals, daycares, etc. Uh, the full text of the uh, request is on our uh, municipal website. Um, underscoring the importance of it, I can uh, use an example uh, of the census that was done I don't forget what year, but back in the uh, prior to the year 2000, and that's when the uh, census was not mandatory. One of the values of, of the census is uh, in that sort of down the road is uh, people uh, collect the, the data and look at the statistics. They can create what's called a community profile. In our region, there were only two communities that did not have a community profile, Merrick for Wolford and the town of Prescott. And when I inquired as to why not, because it wasn't a mandatory census, not enough people did the census. There weren't enough numbers, if you will, to uh, produce st statistics and, and create that community profile. So it's, uh, you know, the more we can, uh, when you see folks and they're questioning about the census, uh, encourage them, please, to uh, complete the, the, uh, the census. And uh, as I say, it's on our website uh, uh, indicating the value of it, and we hope folks uh, complete that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention to uh, to members is that uh, last Friday afternoon there was a uh, teleconference uh, with all the mayors in the province of Ontario, with the uh, the premier, the minister of health, the solicitor general, um, minister of labor, I believe it's labor skills and training, and uh, municipal affairs minister, our MPP Steve Clark. Um, there were uh, there was a lot of overview from the by the uh, the premier and the uh, members of, of cabinet. Uh, a lot of the information is out in the public already, but uh, some of the questions that arose did in some municipalities focus on uh, some of the challenges as to what you do or don't do for boat launches and golf courses, and and some wanted to know you know when might the earliest. Uh, be that everyone is, is vaccinated, and uh, those those were addressed. But uh, it was uh, interesting uh, that the uh, um, the the premier did indicate that uh, you know from on his desk, if you will, in his cabinet, uh, you know, he reads a daily uh, briefing of twenty seven pages, a lot of detail, uh, which is you know leads to decisions that are made and, and direction. Uh, and uh, the premier did speak at the beginning of the teleconference. Uh, I won't go on about you know whether how about his apology, actions taken and, and adjusted. Uh, more to the point, uh, somebody uh, and, and the mayor was not identified. Uh, the two different mayors uh, made the comments uh, to the premier that uh, you don't need to be sorry. The only ones who don't make mistakes are the ones who do nothing. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting comment, but uh, does put in perspective the pressures that uh, all levels of government uh, face you know, on, a, on a regular, or sorry, on a normal basis, even more so compounded during a pandemic. And uh, the other, another comment was uh, that uh, it does no good service to criticize at any level of government. Everybody is doing uh, it, what they're doing with good intentions. And as some substance of the, uh, of the, the my takeaway from the conference and, and uh, messaging for everyone in, in the, you know, the, uh, for the 444 mayors uh, and uh, in the uh, in the province, is that uh, please continue to arrange to get your vaccine. Continue to follow the guidelines: social distancing, wear a mask, wash your hands, and follow the uh, sorry and shop local. You know, and we know America Wolford, uh, while. Uh, you know, the, the most stores are closed, other than the, the gas station and the uh, um, and the grocery store. And uh, I'll say, I think even Mr. McGarrett goes as an example. But if they are not open, they certainly are available for uh, curbside pickup and uh, and and takeout at the restaurants. So and also continue to follow the current orders. So those are just some opening comments that I make today. Uh, Having said that, I will call our meeting to order and uh, ask members, uh, and just for the public to uh, to know that uh, 
in the meeting today, uh, again, the teleconference, uh, we have all members of council, we have our CAO, we have our deputy clerk, we have our uh, manager of operations, uh, fire chief, and our treasurer on the line. I don't think I have missed anybody. Uh, having said that, I will ask uh, any members if you have a pecuniary interest, and if you do, what is the general nature thereof? And uh, so I'll go around the table, <laughs> as if you're all here, and ask Mr. Helpney, do you have a pecuniary interest? No. Thank you. Mr. Cameron, do you have a pecuniary interest? No. Thank you. Mr. Foster, do you have a pecuniary interest? No. And Mr. Moy, do you? No. And nor does the mayor. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. And uh, next I have on our agenda, approval of the agenda. And uh, unless you, uh, anyone objects when I read out your name, when I go through the various motions uh, on the table, I'll ask Mr. Foster to be the mover and Mr. Halpenny to be the seconder to uh, uh, move uh, the motion, which reads, the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby approve the agenda of the regular council meeting of April the 26th, 2021, as circulated. And I'll go around the table for all in favor. Uh, Mr. Foster, you're the mover. Are you in favor? Oh, yes. And, and Mr. Helpney? Yes, sir. And Mr. Cameron? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Malloy? Yes. Thank you. And the motion is carried. And next on our agenda, we do have uh, two sets of uh, minutes. Uh, and I'll do the first set of minutes, which is the meeting on April the 12th. And I'll ask the mover to be uh, Mr. Cameron and the seconder to be Mr. Malloy. The Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of April the 12th, 2021. Uh, if there aren't any errors and or omissions, I'll ask that the minutes be uh, uh, approved as circulated. Mr. Cameron, you are the mover. You're in favor? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Malloy, you're the seconder. You're in favor? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Foster? Yes. And Mr. Helpney? Yes. Thank you. The uh, those, uh, motion is carried. And then we have the uh, the second set of minutes, as indicated on our agenda, which is for the uh, meeting of uh, special meeting of April the twentieth. And I'll ask Mr. Malloy to be the mover and Mr. Helpney to be the seconder. Be hereby resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby approve the minutes of the special council meeting of April the 20th, 2021, as circulated. Uh, if there aren't any errors and or omissions, I'll ask Mr. Malloy as the mover. Are you in favor of the motion, sir? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Helpney? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Cameron? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Foster? Yes. Thank you. The motion is carried. And next members, we have in your, sorry, just a wee bit of paper that uh, I'm managing on my own without having the uh, clerk or deputy clerk in the room with me, so if you just bear with me a moment, please. So the next under correspondence, we do have uh, correspondence from the uh, Chamber of Commerce regarding the use of the uh, display board, uh, and that is the display board in front of our uh, post office, and you can see the correspondence there, but before I get to that, I will read uh, a motion, and then we can go to uh, do the report that's available. Uh, so a mover would be uh, Mr. Foster, and a seconder, Mr. Cameron. Be hereby resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford is hereby received correspondence from Robin Eagle, President of the America Wolford Chamber of Commerce, regarding the Chamber's use of the steel of pardon me of the street side portion of the display board located in front of the post office, dated April fifteenth, twenty twenty one, and that Council does hereby approve that the Mayor for Wolford Chamber of Commerce will be responsible for determining the postings for the street side portion of the display board 
and the council does hereby confirm that maintenance of the display board will remain the, will remain the responsibility of the village of America Wolford. I'm not sure if uh, staff any have have any comments. It's uh, fairly straightforward in terms of uh, what they've put in the uh, in the motion. Uh, I know, Mr. Foster, you had had uh, this may have been part of a conversation that the chamber had uh, at one of their board meetings, and you're the council liaison. Uh, otherwise, it is it appears to be fairly straightforward from my reading. So I'll go to, if, if there's anything you wanted to add, Mr. Foster, otherwise I'll go around the table and ask if anybody has any questions. Mr. Foster. No, I have nothing to add. Thank you. Okay, are there any uh, questions? And I'll go around the table to ask if anybody has any questions before I call the vote. Uh, any questions, Mr. Malloy? Yeah, I have a couple of concerns, or at least one anyway, and that is that side of the, um, uh, uh, of the bulletin board is often used by other... Um, uh, groups in, in the village for their po for their postings. One I can think of right off the top is uh, Theatre Night in Merrickville. Uh, I'm just curious as whether or not this doesn't make um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce in charge of that board and therefore possibly uh, freeze out other members or other groups in the, in the community putting up their signs. Okay, I'm not sure if uh, Mr. Foster wants to speak to that. I'm just going to uh, the letter from the chamber, and I thought there was something uh, wording in there um, in the letter that we received, that the letter date, dated April 15th. Um, It's in the second paragraph. Uh, for purposes of clarity, record keeping, and to address any queries of community groups that may occur, we would confirm that postings to the board be determined by the chamber. Any maintenance? Okay, that's not really addressing specifically, uh, I don't think, Mr. Malloy's uh, question, but uh, I'll go to Mr. Foster. Yes, uh, again, it hadn't occurred to me, Tim. I haven't seen anyone use it using the sign. Of course, he's Nobody's advertising anything right now. Uh, it could be possible. Uh, and, and groups like that. We don't. The village doesn't use its side a great deal right at the moment either. Uh, perhaps there could be room found on the village side uh, to uh, to post notices or, or uh, items of interest. The chamber side. Again, they could be approachable too. I'm sure they work with uh, Theatre Night America on occasion as well. But yes, they, the idea would be the street side portion would be the chambers to use. This would negate the need for uh, at the Enitaf Park. Uh, basically, make use of the existing sign rather than trying to get one built and uh, and save us some money. And it's putting the chamber sign in the area. Where the two are, and have us some in Miracle South, trying to get people to go to Miracle South. So it seemed like a win win at the time to, uh, to let people you know, use that sign. Somebody's, uh, somebody's phone is having, I don't know whether they, uh, um, yeah, they were getting a little bit of static on somebody's phone line. I'm not sure if there's any movement of. Uh, papers or something on their desk, but just uh, try to be mindful of that so we don't pick up uh, background uh, uh, noises. Um, not sure if the, uh, I don't want to say comfort level, but uh, uh, what are you thinking of that response, Mr. Malloy, or for some kind of degree of uh, openness and clarity for the use of the bulletin board on the street side? Well, we go back to that, uh, to, to the letter from the Chamber of Commerce uh, forwarded by Robin Eagle, and yeah. In the second paragraph, and it says that uh, any queries from the community groups that may occur, uh, could we confirm the postings uh, to the board to be determined by the chamber? I'm not. I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. I, I don't. I don't think the chamber should be determining what goes up on that board. I think it's it's a it's the community board, and certainly. Access to that board and even prominent access to that board by the chamber is more than welcome. But I don't think they should be determining who else can go up on that board. And to put it on the side, which I, I assume 
what you're saying is that's the side facing the the the, 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 the post office is is not the most prominent spot for groups to put up their uh, their notices as to things happening in the village. I know people will go around and read it, but just on the casual walk by and looking at it, people won't people won't see it. So I'm I, I would like more confirmation or more um, assurances from the Chamber of Commerce that other community groups will have access to that side of the uh, of the board because after all it is the community board I mean we put it up we pay for it and and, and then go back to the letter uh, and any maintenance for the municipality so they're still expecting us to pay for it so I think I think we need to clarify that thank you mr. boy yes yeah, certainly uh, just to be clear on the post office side uh, the We'll call it municipal use is typically for uh, municipal notices, uh, you know, the agendas and and uh, and the like. Uh, on the street side, it is that more, uh, it, it not so much that aspect of the community use. I think, uh, if I understand the, the genesis of, of of the suggestion and the ask for the chamber, uh, and Mr. Foster uh, can uh, perhaps. Uh, confirm this was indeed for we'll call it the the chamber map if you will and I don't think the chamber map is necessarily going to take up the whole space uh, you know corner to corner to corner to corner uh, as mr. F in other words room for other uh, uh, promotions uh, etc and I think and I, I'm not sure how time sensitive uh, this might be from for the chamber, but if we're going to, uh, what's the expression? If, you, if you're going to get it right, let's get it right once. And and I am, you know, I have uh, a, lot, a lot of confidence that you know there's the chamber sees value in promoting other events as well, uh, other than uh, say a business uh, event. Uh, and uh, a great one, as Mr. Malloy has pointed out, is uh, is something a production of Theater Night in Merrickville. So if if uh, if there is, if council members agree, and Mr. Foster maybe can help me on this, this is not excessively time sensitive in the sense that uh, in, they need to know, um, you know, t today by today's motion uh, that we get some clarity in terms of, uh, of it'll yes, it'll afford the uh, the chamber map uh, on that side of the bulletin board and somehow clarify. Uh, a process to have other um, notices or, or promotions or whatever the right verbiage is uh, on that side as well. It's, it's, and uh, so we, uh, and I'll go to, uh, so I'll ask Mr. Foster if that has a sense, and if that is the case, that we would, um, again, uh, make sure you get the direction from staff, that uh, rather than defeating the motion, we'd withdraw the motion and have another motion come back, hopefully at the next meeting with some, some clarity. So uh, is that correct, Mr. Foster, that the initial intent, uh, the, the primary intent, if you will, is for the chamber mapping and the other pieces are uh, would be supplementary, if you will, to that uh, prime, primary need? Well, I think the, the chamber is pretty clear. Robin uh, Eagle states in this, for purposes of clarity, record keeping, and to address any queries from community groups that may occur, they would like to confirm that post board be determined by the chamber. So that's they're quite clear that they want to uh, have control of the notice board on the street side. So it's, there's really not much more they can clarify. It's very clear. Now, are we going to ask them whether they will accommodate other groups, or can we accommodate any other groups on the post office side of the community board? Anyway, that's pretty clear what they're saying. Yeah, it's certainly very clear in the asking. It's to go to Mr. Malloy's point, and again, I I don't want to read too much into it, but certainly, you know, the the spirit of the chamber is to um, is supportive of other. Uh, groups and events that, that may take place within the municipality, but to the point that is the wording indeed in, in the uh, in the resolution, and it doesn't give that uh, uh, we'll call it that assurance, if if you will, that uh, another uh, group or sorry event would be afforded. Uh, we'll call you know the exposure the, you know, on the uh, on the bulletin board on the street side. 
here we are. Councillor right. Cam Councillor Cameron here. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Cameron. If I may, thank you. Um, I, I believe Tim uh, is uh, on the right path here. It's a community board. It should be shared. Uh, I'm all for promoting uh, the chamber and businesses within the, uh, the village itself and the rest of the municipality. Uh, I think that board should remain a, a shared asset for all. And uh, the, the uh, mapping that was originally in the park and uh, we had had discussions that there were, we were that was going to be updated and uh, to be more, more relevant to today's businesses. I think uh, sharing, offering the chamber a, a shared space with other uh, groups within the community to advertise in that board, the use of that board would be something that we should be going down. Uh, looking at that as a uh, resolution to this problem that we seem to be up against today, uh, giving them uh, carte blanche uh, and uh, allowing them to uh, dictate on who can and who cannot advertise on that side of the board, I think would be cutting some people out like Mr. Boy has suggested. So I think maybe perhaps uh, some kind of an agreement, uh, uh, a more shared uh, aspect uh, with the rest of the community and an agreement with the chamber that that would be allowed some more clarification on their request would be great. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, what I'm going to uh, put forward uh, for uh, consideration for members um, that sometimes the, rather than to rewording uh, the motion before us, uh, that we ask staff to, <laughs> to uh, come back with a motion that would uh, afford the chamber the opportunity to have their map their map and this would be uh, not the map that is going to go at the uh, the parkette slash village, village uh, square but rather the map uh, in, instead of a map down by the cenotaph so it would be that uh, a, a chamber map and that the balance of the space uh, be used for uh, promoting uh, community group events you know, there may be better wording to go on the motion uh, and that motion to come back to, uh, to council for uh, um, for consideration, and uh, in the meantime, uh, conveying that conveying that information to the uh, to the chamber of commerce. So uh, it, it may well do, uh, uh, you know, may well be a win-win in the sense that uh, it, it, it would allow the chamber uh, mapping and uh, and continue to allow groups to have. Uh, you know, I'll put a quotation marks. Uh, you know, appropriate notice, notices and and uh, uh, of, of events, et cetera. And um, at that point, if, you know, then who would uh, um, give the uh, um, the green light, if you will, for such items to be put in the uh, in the bulletin board? With, uh, is, is your sense, uh, Mr. Foster, that that's, that's not going to cause a uh, problem for the chamber from a timing point of view of having that, we'll call it that second map? No, I'm not following you here, Mr. Mayor, but uh, it seems that the will of council is that they don't want to give up the control of the street side of the map to the chamber. So I think so. You were breaking up a bit there. Were you saying uh, did not give up control of the uh, of what content would go in the uh, on the street side, other other than the, the chamber map? Any uh, <laughs> But as I said, they're very clear in uh, Robin's request. Yep. In terms of so, uh, my, my uh, sense is certainly from two council two council members. They're they're. Uh, um, they're, they're indicating that they would do not want the chamber to have that, um, I'll use the word, um, control. Um, and, uh, I'm just, I'm just looking for some, uh, positive direction that, that we can, uh, give, uh, uh, staff and, and, or, uh, uh, yeah, uh, give staff to bring back a motion, uh, that would bring some, um, Clarity as to where we would like to to be on that street side of the bulletin board, and I think the clarity is 
is uh, I, I think uh, Mr. Malloy and Mr. Cameron have indicated that they're supportive of the, of the chamber having the mapping on that side. It's the other content as to uh, and and who would um, um, who would be responsible for, if you will, um, of other groups having information on that side of the uh, the bulletin board. And I and I'm not sure even sure at the moment that uh, that there is a uh, if you a formal process uh, in in terms of putting notices and that will go pre pandemic times uh, other than uh, people dropping off something at the municipal office saying could you please put this uh, notice in in the in the bulletin board and and it may be as, as simple as that it would would come to uh, you know the the municipality whether it's uh, you know, promoting uh, you know the upcoming fair, or something, an upcoming theater night in Merrickville, um, um, production, uh, etc. So, well, if, if, I may, if, I may, if I may comment, yes, Mr. Malloy. Um, I guess two things. Uh, first is a question: um, What map are they planning on putting uh, in that space? Is it the same? Is it the same map as? That's on the uh, by by the blockhouse, because if that's the case, that's an awful big map. It'll take up a ton of that space uh, of the available space. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think it's, there should be a confinement, uh, uh, a designated space area, I like, thing that they can have to put their put to put their their their, their map up. And uh, the way it's been operating for as long as I know seems to work pretty well. It just you know you as you say. It's, the groups bring it into the office. The village office takes it in, and when time arrives, they put it up. Um, I'm not sure why the Chamber of Commerce wants control over it. I think Mr. Foster could clarify that. My understanding is the uh, the, uh, the current map at the at the parkette will be replaced with a new map, and that the uh, mapping that would go in the bulletin board. Uh, would be may well be updated as well. Uh, so whether it's you know taking literally the map from the parkette and and and, uh, and mounting it, if you will, in that bulletin board, is, I think it would be a different map. But uh, I don't know whether there was that much detail discussed at the uh, uh, at the chamber uh, meeting that uh, Mr. Foster you attended recently. So the map at the parkette that Tim's uh, referring to uh, the. All businesses in the village, whether they belong to the Chamber of Commerce or not, are represented on that. So that's everyone in the village, the Chamber of The offer from the village previously was that the maps holders that were removed from the parquette uh, would either be rebuilt, relocated, uh, they'd have to be cleaned up, etc. And then the suggestion was they would be relocated to the Cenotaph Park. So with that in mind and with an expense there, we have an existing underutilized board at the in front of the post office. And that's, again, I might have jumped the gun there when I thought, wow, that would be an easy fix. The Chamber of Commerce would have their map in place. They were hoping to have it in place before the Victoria Day weekend. Uh, and it's it's a pre-existing space that, I, as I mentioned before, I don't really feel that it's utilized particularly well. The chamber was hoping to have that space to use, and that's why they were de de trying to determine whether they would have uh, control over the content that went into that uh, map display or whatever, the uh, <coughs> community board. So if they don't have control over it, how much space are you prepared to give them, I guess you've got to figure that out, Whether, or do we allow the community groups to advertise on the post office side and let the Chamber of Commerce have the street side? So, um, you know, the, the interesting comments is, uh, <laughs> in terms of, of people visiting uh, slash, you know, uh, public um, expo exposure, if you will, um, it, it is the street side, and uh, so if you think of the, the the building side, would be more um, we'll call it local, uh, you know, uh, minutes, uh, um, you know, agendas, uh, you know, uh, if you will, more local 
uh, more local notices on the uh, sort of local visitor side. That is the, you know, what we'll call the pedestrian traffic walk-by uh, is indeed on the street side. Uh, there may, may very well be uh, an opportunity, and I don't know whether it's 50-50 in terms of space, uh, but to say to the Chamber of Commerce, or, or, or maybe it's two-thirds, one-third, uh, a, a significant space for the map, the mapping, and uh, the balance of that space for other notices, whether it be, again, the Theatre Night in Mer Merrickville, you know, the fair, et, et, et cetera, and that uh, we uh, uh, would, would direct our uh, council liaison to uh, communicate that with the, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and uh, for uh, staff to just confirm in terms of a, a, a recommended process and it may well just be, you know, staying the way it works now. As I mentioned, and, and, and Mr. Malloy uh, uh, indicated, it works right. Well, if you have a notice to go in on the street side, bring it to the uh, the office, and uh, obviously, if it's uh, something local and, uh, and so on, it would get put in the uh, in the uh, in the notice board. But I, I want to say we're starting from uh, ground zero. Uh, again, I think uh, as Mr. Cameron and Mr. Bermelloy were not adverse to having the map in there. It's just to what degree would the map take up the space? Um, yes, uh, you know, this, this may well get, get sorted out uh, prior to the May tw uh, 24 weekend. Uh, but as I said earlier on, if we're going to do it you know, once, let's do it once right. Um, and uh, if everybody's comfortable with that, that we would... Uh, um, Withdraw this motion from the uh, uh, off the table today and go with that direction with to Mr. Foster and to uh, staff to bring back uh, information to uh, for our next council meeting and hopefully with a uh, with a motion that uh, we can all support and brings clarity to the to the opportunity, if you will. Are you would you are you comfortable with that, uh, Mr. Malloy? Yeah, yes, uh, certainly. And I guess the only other point I would make is the size of the map. The size of the chamber map that they put in there is is vital because if you were to take the one that's down at the Senate at the uh, Blockhouse Park right now, it would take up easily 75 percent of that uh, space. So they've got to put down the, the, the map they want to put 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 it, put in has to be reduced so there's room around it around it for other notices. Exactly, and that's uh, would bring back some clarity. Of, you know, uh, whether you know what the fit would be, whether it's uh, I'm not going to get into numbers today. But bring back a uh, recommendation for council to, uh, to consider. Uh, are you all right with that direction as well, uh, Mr. Cameron? I certainly am. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Helpy. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, and Mr. Foster. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, just a uh, technical question to uh, staff who are on the line in terms of, so we did read a motion that's on the table. Uh, do we uh, just by concurrence of, of uh, the direction that um, council has just given uh, that this uh, motion is, I uh, just draw a line through it and uh, it's uh, removed from the agenda. And Thank you, Mr. Mr. Robertson, are you on the line there for that one? I am, Your, Your Worship. It's Doug Robertson. Um, a, a couple of options to Council. One is to actually continue on with the vote and defeat the vote, if, if that's the case that occurs. An alternative is to amend the motion. Uh, we don't really have a, 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 an option in the procedure by bylaw for withdrawing a motion. Um, I can take a moment, if you don't mind pausing for a moment, to look at some of the more detailed wording of dispensing with a motion and that type of thing. Um, but there is also, bear with me one moment, uh, an option to defer the motion, in which case we could bring this back uh, perhaps with an alternative motion alongside for Council's consideration. That might be your best and uh, most expedient option at this moment. So what I'm hearing is, okay, we, uh, we are deferring the motion. Uh, is, is, is we'll go with a, a simple moving forward from a procedural perspective, and in deferring, do I just draw a line through uh, the motion that's on the before me? Uh, just to be technical about your worship, if someone would like to raise the motion to defer this motion, then then it would simply be brought back to you at a future meeting. As long as that motion, the motion to defer, carries. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, I think that's a, a very <laughs> a good clear. Uh, uh, 
procedural direction. Uh, it, it doesn't does not impinge on the direction that we previously gave. gave and because uh, Mr. Malloy and Mr. Cameron uh, brought up the uh, the questions about this motion, I'll look to you, gentlemen, to be the mover and a seconder to defer the motion that I that is on the table. Are you comfortable with that, Mr. Malloy and Mr. Cameron? Yes. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, so we'll go with all in favor. Mover and a seconder would be in favor. You are in favor of deferring the motion, Mr. Halkney? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Foster? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so, and to staff, um, it's not a carry or defeated. I will write at the bottom of this, uh, the paper in front of me, deferred and initial it. Is, is that, uh, and moved by? Moved by. Mr. Malloy and seconded by Mr. Cameron, uh, deferred, and I've initialed it. Does that uh, sound correct, staff? Uh, I believe so, Your Worship. I'll read you just the relevant section. It's motion to postpone or defer. A motion to defer shall, in one, include a reason for the deferral and a fixed date to which the matter is deferred. Uh, it takes precedent over any other any motion or amendment except a motion to adjourn. Um, it's to be to be debated. Uh, however, the debate must be limited to the advi advisability of the proposed postponement and only be amended to change the length of the postponement. So in other words, Your Worship, we just need uh, you to note the reason for the deferral and the, the fixed date to which the matter is deferred. Right, and uh, Hope Springs Eternal, it will be at our next council meeting, which is the 10th of May. Very good. Thank you uh, for your assistance, uh, Mr. Robertson, and uh, great discussion, council members, and uh, all very positive and moving this uh, forward in a very constructive way. Thank you all for that. And next we'll move on to number six under library board. We have uh, library uh, board minutes from March the 10th, and I do believe I have a motion for that. We have our library uh, liaison with us, so it will be moved by Mr. Malloy and seconded by Mr. Foster. Be hereby resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of Maricopa Wolford does hereby receive Maricopa Public Library Board minutes of March the 10th, 2021, for information purposes. Uh, fairly uh, good and concise minutes, as, as always. Uh, anything in particular, Mr. Malloy, you wanted to bring to Council's attention? No, it's very straightforward in the minutes. Indeed, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, members, you've heard the motion to receive for information purposes. So, all in favor, Mr. Malloy? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Foster? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. And Mr. Helpy? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. The motion is carried. And then under finance, we have uh, a number of items under finance. We just Bear with me, I'll get caught up here as well. Uh, first item is regarding uh, water meter replacement, and there is a uh, staff report attached. Um, so we have uh, a couple of off-tier gentlemen for, for consideration, and this is specifically um, for um, regarding replacement of, of uh, water meters and or uh, water meters that have become uh, ineffective, I guess. And uh, th there is an option in terms of whether uh, um, regarding life cycle replacement uh, of, of uh, water meters and uh, there are a couple of uh, folks that have had water meters uh, replaced uh, in the interim, and uh, I'm not sure. The, I think maybe before I read the motion, uh, I'll ask staff if there's anything uh, additional that they want to add for clarity or understanding. <laughs> Certainly, the report is very clear. Uh, anything particular bring to the attention of, of council, uh, and if not, I will uh, have some uh, comments and then uh, we'll go around the table to uh, to council members. Uh, anything additional uh, or, or for uh, 
greater clarity. Um, it's either Mr. Robertson or our treasurer on the line. Your Worship, it's Doug Robertson. I'll defer to the treasurer for this one. Anything particular you wanted to uh, uh, highlight or bring to Council's attention? attention uh, um, hi, this is Kirsten speaking. Uh, no, no, I believe it's all laid out in the report, so we're just bringing the staff forth to seek direction from Council. Thank you. Uh, my, my initial comments, and I'll share this with, with uh, members of council, and you can, uh, and then you know, get other questions or comments from from members. Um, so the you know the, the water meters are the responsibility of uh, of um, the uh, rephrase the responsibility. Uh, water meters are on uh, every every uh, re uh, property, if you will, house or, uh, and or business and business uh, that is on the municipal water service. Um, I, I think I commented in an earlier meeting, uh, I do recall uh, when f meters were first installed uh, that uh, as part of your billing, there was, uh, it indicated uh, the amount, owing if you will, and the amount contributed by the uh, water sewer reserve. So it was a, a zero impact as it was not an upfront cost to, uh, to residents and businesses. Uh, when we look at the fact that you know over the course of the, of the next number of years, uh, water meters do need to be replaced, and uh, the approximate uh, you know, cost you know today uh, is a little uh, over six hundred and sixty six dollars. So we could say to residents, yeah, when it's your your turn, if you will, part of the cycle of replacement, you're going to get billed for six hundred and sixty six dollars. That's that's quite a hit. Uh, however, you know, provincial legislation is that the users, you know, pay for it. We do have the dollars in the water and sewer reserve. That reserve goes up and down, uh, you know, over the course of, of the years. And we, we know that, uh, I won't say it was depleted, but certainly reduced significantly a couple of years ago with a great project on St. Patrick Street upgrading. Uh, you know, part of that was upgrading the uh, water and sewer. Uh, that came out of reserves uh, over the last uh, couple of years. You know, with the rates, the residents, the users, sorry, residents, businesses are replenishing that reserve. So it would not be, from my perspective, why would we bill people individually when they've already contributing financially to those reserves and we use the reserves to uh, pay for the replacement of water meters uh, as their uh, life cycle uh, comes and goes. And, and the same would apply to people that have already, uh, I think there's half a dozen perhaps, uh, that have had their uh, um, water meters replaced. So I put that out there for, uh, for something to think about, and uh, I'll, I'll go around the table, comments from, uh, from members. Uh, I'm sure everybody may, may have a question and or a comment, so I'll start to my Ziffy in the room, so I left Mr. Malloy. Questions and or comments? Um, I'm just pondering this. I, 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 th I think my indication, my, my preference would be that the um, the meters are part of the water of the uh, of the system, and the system belongs to the to the village, and it would be therefore the village's responsibility to replace the meters because it's the meters that tell how much to charge the residents. Um, so that would be my inclination to uh, to have the funding uh, covered by the um, by um, our, our our water budget. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and just to be clear, when uh, to make sure when people hear, you know, the village paying for it. This is this is not from uh, the the monies do not come from property taxes. The uh, the the funds come from, as Mr. Moy indicated, you know, the, the the user fees, and and they go into the reserves, and so it'd be using those reserves to pay for the replacement. Uh, well, well said, Mr. Moy. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Yes, uh, a couple of questions. First off, the six meters. That have been replaced. Uh, I would assume that they weren't functioning any longer. That's why they had to be replaced. That is my understanding from the report. Yes. So they were mechanically defective then, as in the defect being they no longer worked. So I'm just wondering, when we replaced those meters, why we decided to charge the homeowners if the meter quit working when it states in the bylaw that that's the cost of repair should be paid by the village. Not to get too far off the, the uh, sort of the direct 
uh, discussion uh, on the report, but I, uh, Mr. Robertson may want to speak to this. There are two parts uh, of the bylaw that have conflicting wording, and I believe staff are going to come back with uh, some wording that um, clarifies things and has everything on a level playing field, if you will. Uh, so if we just pause uh, the discussion on, uh, you know, how we fund, quote unquote, you know, the regular replacement, uh, Mr. Robertson may uh, have a few comments today in terms of uh, defective uh, water meters. Well, Jim, before we start on Doug, uh, the CAOs, the other question that I had was that these meters don't have to be replaced at the same, they don't all have to be replaced within a certain time frame, do they? Or are we just going to replace them as they break down? No, I think there's uh, there's going to be a plan to do, to a cycle over you know quite a few years. Whether that's you know whether that's 50 year, 100 year, um, we'll get reports later on about that. But it is a process to over a period of time replace all the water meters because they're coming to their if you will end of life cycle. Uh, thank yeah, you, Mr. Doug Robertson. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Robertson. Oh, sorry, my, my apologies, Your Worship, and, and Councillor Foster. So uh, just to answer a couple of questions. Um, well, we don't know, as staff, we have made inquiries with Aqua. We don't know in, in very, very detailed technical terms what they use to determine when a water meter uh, needs to be replaced. But, but uh, uh, in regard to Councillor Foster's question, there are two conflicting provisions within the bylaw. Section F of bylaw 2403 speaks to the replacement of defective meters, um, uh, indicating that if the meters found to be mechanically defective, then the cost of repair shall be on the village. But there is also essentially a life cycle repair, uh, sorry, life cycle replacement need outlined in Schedule B of the bylaw 2403. And um, that second one is the one that Aqua is, is using on an ongoing basis. All of the, the meters were installed at the same time that the system was upgraded. So it is anticipated over the coming few years, perhaps we don't know exactly, depending on, on how, they, they, uh, how they retire them, so to speak. But over the coming few years, we anticipate uh, the bulk of them to need to be replaced. Uh, but again, that, that's a little bit of crystal ball gazing in terms of how quickly they wear down. Uh, and that's a big part of the reason that we're bringing this back to Council now. Before we get too deep into that process, recognizing that regardless of which direction Council wants to pursue in terms of who covers the cost and how the, how the cost is managed, uh, we wanted to make sure that we bring back to you a clarified bylaw which reflects Council's wishes. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Foster, uh, additional questions or comment? No, no, none, uh, but I would be uh, aligned with uh, Councillor Malloy that this would be part of the, uh, the water service that the, the village, or I should say the, the uh, the users will ultimately be paying for this any, anyway, but adding an extra $666 uh, to replace the meters could be a bit painful. So no, I would I would sooner see it come out of reserves. Yep, thank you. Mr. Cameron, any questions? Uh, yeah, well, more, more or less a comment. Uh, I agree with the other two councillors. That's what the reserves are there for, is Indeed, to yes. and maintain the system. And uh, downloading that cost to an individual and, and adding the cost of their water to a bill, some people will be looking at bills over $1,000. I think that would be a bit of a shock to the system, and they're already paying into the system. So I believe that uh, using the reserves to fund that is the way that we should be going. And some of the research that I've done, the, the meter itself gives a, a code. Uh, once it uh, indicates that code, it, uh, it indicates to the person taking the reading that the meter is no longer active. It's, it's end of life. Yeah, thank I you, don't sir. Know Oops, sorry, go ahead. Oh, exactly how many are, are, are coming due but uh, uh, in the next short term, but as indicated in the report, there's 400 over the next few years. So I think that gradually taking the funds out of the reserves and replacing these meters is... Uh, that's what the users are paying into the system for to maintain the so we should be using that money to uh, to uh, correct the situation. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Helpy, any any questions or comments? No, no comments right now, thanks. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. So uh, we're all on the same page as I was saying at, at the beginning. Uh, it's always in that uh, it, uh, I say this the right way. You know, you, are you going to pay me now or pay me later? Well, you know, the pay me now might be a uh, who knows what the exact uh, cost will be at the time, but you know, in excess of six hundred dollars. And and as we all know, every <clears throat> pardon me, every user on the system. As part of their as part of their billing is contributing dollars to the reserve, and the reserve is, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, maintaining the system. And it's not just the delivery of of the of the water, but indeed uh, calculating the amount of water used. So it's a uh, good conversation, uh, gentlemen. And it, it's nice to hear that the staff are going to bring back um, some uh, uh, recommend amendment to the the two bylaws that Mr. Robertson uh, referenced. So we have clarity moving forward. And to that end, uh, so I'm looking at the at the motion in front of me, and I just want to make sure that I'm going to uh, check off the two pieces that uh, this, that the council would want to support. And uh, so the the first one is the council directs staff to bring back a revised water wastewater bylaw, which the village absorbs the life cycle replacement cost of the meters. And I think that's what we're agreeing to. And that council does. Uh, approve the refund of the cost associated with the residents who paid for meter replacement from January 20th uh, to date. And I believe uh, there are perhaps a half a dozen uh, at, and anyway, supporting that as opposed to uh, the council direct staff to bring back a revised water uh, budget in uh, which the residents continue to pay the life cycle replacement. Uh, that's, that's the part that would be Oh, if it's replaced, you're going to get a bill in the mail, and that's not what the, the conversation of council was. So, uh, if I can have a uh, mover being uh, Mr. Malloy and the seconder, Mr. Foster, the motion would read, be hereby resolved that the council of the corporation of the village of Maryford Wolford does hereby receive report finance-08-2021 regarding water meter replacements for information purposes and that council does hereby direct staff to bring back a revised water and wastewater bylaw in which the village absorbs the life cycle replacement cost of water meters and the council does direct does hereby approve the refund of the cost associated with the residents who have paid for water meter replacement from January 2021 from January 2020 to date and uh, if there aren't any further questions or comments, uh, I think we're all on the same page. I'm going to ask uh, for the vote uh, to be in favor of the motion as read. Are you in favor, Mr. Halpy? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Cameron? Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Foster? Yes. And Mr. Malloy? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. The motion is carried. Next, we have a motion regarding the um, uh, library, ass uh, library billing asset regarding of our financial state regarding financial statements, and I think this is uh, uh, recommended by our auditor. But I'll put the motion on the table and then ask for uh, uh, staff if they have a comment. Uh, or some clarification, so I'll ask uh, the mover to be Mr. Foster and the seconder to be Mr. Malloy. Be it hereby resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby receive report finance-09-2021 regarding the request to report the library building as an asset in the village's financial statements for information purposes and that Council hereby directs that the library building asset be moved from the Maryville Public Library's financial statements to the village of Maryville Wolford's financial statements. And the report is from our treasurer, and uh, I'm not sure, uh, sorry, and so, Kirsten, do you have anything uh, additional to add or bring uh, uh, to uh, Council's attention in terms of uh, your report to Council? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, no, I don't, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Are there any questions? And I'll start with Mr. Malloy. Any questions, sir? No, but that's a perfect uh, thing to do. I've, I've been advocating for this for a while now. Thank you on the financial statements. Thank you. Mr. Foster, any questions? 
No questions. And Mr. Cameron. Uh, no questions. Thank you. And Mr. Helpney. Not right now, thank you. Thank you very much. So, gentlemen, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Are you in favor of the motion, Mr. Helpney? Yes. And Mr. Cameron? Yes. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Foster? Yes. And Mr. Malloy? Yes. yes. Thank you, gentlemen. The motion is carried. And next, gentlemen, we have our uh, budget, and I will put the uh, motion on the table, and uh, I'll ask to be moved by uh, Mr. Malloy and seconded by Mr. Cameron. Be it hereby resolved that bylaw 23-2021, being a bylaw to adopt the 2021 operating capital wastewater, water and wastewater and library budgets, in the 2021 salary and the 2021 salary grid be read a first and second time, and the bylaw 23-2021 be read a third and final time. And uh, members, you know, we've had a number of working meetings. Um, we've had the uh, library budgets, uh, the our water wastewater budgets, um, and uh, there was a lot of uh, great deal of care and consideration. Uh, done by our, our uh, staff in bringing forward the, the budget for uh, council to go over literally line by line. Uh, we did have some, obviously, you know, uh, every now and then there are questions for clarity. We got uh, good questions and good responses from our uh, from staff such that we brought forward uh, what you have before you today is, is our draft budget, which I do believe uh, comes in at zero, and I'll ask staff just to, to verify that. And uh, otherwise, I'll ask if there are any uh, uh, questions on the, uh, the schedules that are in our uh, budget package, uh, sorry, in our uh, agenda package this afternoon. So uh, I'm not sure whether uh, Mr. Robertson or our treasurer, Kirsten, uh, wants to you know, speak to that. It's Doug Robertson, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, through Your Worship, so just to recap very briefly, on, on, as you said, on April 20th, Council gave staff direction to uh, come back with a 0% uh, budget. But uh, in addition to that, the, the $3,000 request from the library to help uh, offset some of the costs for the building repairs. Um, as you know, with budgeting um, and financial matters, uh, the information continues to flow, even though we're going through our process and trying to bring it to a close. Since that meeting, staff have received some additional information uh, regarding our grant revenue, uh, which caused us to look back at our grant revenue and refine it a little bit further in terms of our forecast, which uh, has increased our grant revenue level, uh, uh, sorry, our revenue uh, forecast very slightly, just enough, Your Worship, that it would allow us to offset that $3,000 library request in the village's operating budget. So what you have before you in the bylaw today is actually a 0% budget increase, uh, including offsetting the $3,000 library request for the building repairs. That's great news. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so I'll go around the, the table and ask if there are any uh, uh, questions uh, from uh, members of council. Do you have any questions, Mr. Helpney? I don't know. Mr. Cameron. Um, did we receive any correspondence from the public? Not that I'm aware of. I'll ask if uh, we received any correspondence from the public. Uh, staff, are you aware of any correspondence from the public? Thank you, Worship Doug Robertson. On the on the on the budget. Thank you, Worship Doug Robertson. Just the only correspondence that we received is what we have provided to council already. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any, uh, questions, any questions on the on the budget, Mr. Cameron? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm I'm having a I'm having a hard time uh, digesting that. I mean, we haven't allowed the public uh, input in uh, designing this budget we haven't had very much conversation with council on the budget and we just discussed the budget budget uh, one day last week and here we are already approving it i think that we're moving along too quickly uh it, the general portion of the budget is a good budget but there are items in there that aren't reflective to the needs of the the community i have a few problems uh, uh with that so i i uh I'm hoping that uh, we can have a further discussion before we approve this. I, I would like the support uh, from the rest of council uh, that we have a, a discussion on how we could be more uh, reflective in, in, in the community uh, to 
towards community needs and allow some extra time for input from the public. That's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just remind uh, folks the responsibility uh, for uh, for a budget and if you have the design of a budget is, is that uh, co collaborative effort between the elected council and and for staff. And uh, we do not have one meeting. Actually, I think we had two meetings, if not a third one, if you count the uh, uh, the library budget. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for your comments, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cameron. Uh, this is has been a collaborative effort. Uh, by all members of, of council, including yourself, going through every line by line, and I don't recall at any time uh, anybody, including yourself, sir, saying that we are missing uh, doing something. When you when you look at, you know, the the the, the purpose of a, of, a budget, of a budget is to you know look after what we have, improve what we have, and and possibly do more with of what we have, and particularly that comes down to roads. And uh, we have to be financially responsible. We, you know, we don't print money. We have to stay within a, a budget that comes out at zero. Uh, it, that is the law of the province of Ontario for municipalities to develop budgets that are uh, zero uh, in, in, uh, in terms of the, uh, not, not necessarily zero tax increase, uh, but you can't budget for a surplus and you can't budget for a de deficit. And there are always, 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 uh, you know, uh, I'll call it conf conflicting uh, tugs, if, if you will, to uh, you know increase uh, uh, reserves, you know, uh, reduce uh, deficit, and, and hold the tax line. And uh, I think the the, uh, the overall tone and, and conversation of all members of council uh, leading up to this point has been uh, very cognizant of that, a very positive and, and constructive uh, discussions and direction that we gave to staff bringing this budget to uh, the draft to the table today. So uh, any any questions, Mr. Foster? Uh, no questions, but I was just going to uh, uh, mention to uh, Councillor Cameron regarding, uh, Mike, we can still take money from reserves if there are, uh, whether it's a recreation project or something like that. If you recall our discussion where we funded the compactor uh, without going into reserves, and at that time, we spoke to the to Kirsten, and uh, she explained that we can take money out of reserves for uh, specially designated projects, etc. So that's it doesn't close the door on everything, uh, Councillor Cameron. Yes, yes, you're right, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Foster. That this is the uh, the budget, if you will, that is uh, identifying you know where the money is going, whether it's going into you know. Um, um, into reserves, whether it's capital reserve, recreational reserve, uh, that indicates where the money collected will be going, or on the various capital projects. And during the course of the year, uh, as, as Mr. Foster said, there may be a, a project identified during the course of the year uh, where uh, you know may be identified. We want to uh, invest or uh, spend some money on something. Where will that money come from? Uh, it's not in the budget. Oh, but it is in the reserve, and council can make a, uh, you know, by resolution, a, a determination to take X number of dollars out of a particular reserve for a particular purpose during the year. So, uh, thank you for that, Mr. Foster. Any questions, Mr. Malloy? No, no, thank you, sir. Thank you. On on that basis, uh, I'm going to call the vote because I, I think uh, again uh, we all worked. Uh, uh, very well together. You know, staff uh, presented a, uh, uh, a very good uh, draft for uh, council to to work on, and I think it's a, you know it does um, reflect the fact that uh, you know over the over time it's been directed by or sorry recommended by our auditor uh, that we need to um, in increase our contribution to various reserves, capital reserve in particular. That was a couple of years ago. We have done that similarly with our uh, water and, and sewer reserves. And uh, yeah, as the auditor has said, our, our net debt indicator has been reduced from moderate to low. And uh, and continue, our staff continue to manage uh, our finances uh, very well as as directed by you know council in the form in this case in the form of a budget. And uh, collectively, uh, we have all given a lot of uh, great care and consideration to the budget this year. 
uh, you know, challenging times uh, all the time. So, you know, for some of our uh, property owners uh, to, you know, to pay their taxes and uh, for some a little more challenging during the, uh, the pandemic and uh, keeping the, uh, the tax rate increase this year at zero uh, is uh, just underscores the care and consideration that uh, uh, council and, and staff have given to uh, the people who live in, in uh, America Wolford. So um, I'll call the call the vote. I think, I think I've already done that. No, I haven't. I'll call the vote. All in favor. Mr. Helpley, are you in favor, sir? Yes. Mr. Cameron, are you in favor, sir? Uh, no, I'm not. Mr. Foster, are you in favor? Yes. And Mr. Malloy, are you in favor? Yes. Passing the budget. The budget is passed. Thank you all very much. And next, uh, moving the process forward, is the uh, um, bylaw in terms of uh, setting the tax rates based on the budget that was just passed. And so I'll have a mover, Mr. Foster, and a seconder, Mr. Healthy. Be hereby resolved that bylaw 24 2021, being a bylaw to set the 2021 tax rates, be read a first and second time, and the bylaw 24 2021 be read a third and final time and passed. And uh, moving the process forward, I don't think we need the, uh, if, if there's a question when I go around the table to ask if you're in favor, ask it then. Otherwise, the question is, are you in favor of passing the bylaw? Mr. Malloy, are you in favor, sir? Yes. And Mr. Foster? Yes. And Mr. Cameron? No. And Mr. Halpy? Yes. The motion is carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Agenda under uh, eight CIO clerk report. There is a uh, resolution regarding IBM group contract for planning uh, services, and I'll put the motion on the table and then let the uh, Mr. Robertson speak to uh, to the report. So a mover would be uh, Mr. Healthney, and a seconder would be Mr. Foster. Be hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of American Wolford does hereby authorize the CIO. Clerk, Director of Economic Development, to execute a contract for municipal planning services with IBI Group, dated April the 16th, 2021. Mr. Robertson, sir. Thank you, Your Worship. Good afternoon, Council. Um, so, as you know, the development industry is extremely busy right now, and uh, it is always dynamic with with planners working for multiple clients and multiple municipalities uh, and interacting with multiple developers. That's m more so the case now than, than I've, I've ever seen it, quite frankly. Um, and of course, along with that, we, we occasionally run into conflicts where a planner cannot work for a municipality because they're already serving uh, a client or, or another municipality in some way. Um, that combined with the limitations placed on us about timelines from the Planning Act really means we need to have access to a secondary source for planning and engineering expertise. In this case, what I brought forward to you is a proposed contract with IBI Group um, for planning services, recognizing particularly the, the time limits on planning in the Planning Act. Uh, to make sure that we have access to that secondary source of expertise when we need it and don't run, run afoul of LPAT rules and the Planning Act rules with regard to timelines. Okay. Thank you, sir. Just for clarification, uh, there's um, it, it's uh, not paying a retainer similar to uh, JP2G. We only pay for services when services are required. That's correct, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go around the table, ask if there are any questions. Any questions, Mr. Healthy? No. Any questions, Mr. Cameron? So, uh, if, if I'm understanding correctly, we're just going to use the IBI group as a backup to JP2G? They'll still be our main uh, resource? That's my understanding. Mr. Robertson? Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, they, they, it's not intended that they be our primary planner. However, the contract does allow us to use them uh, when when it is necessary to use them, and we do have one or two projects right now where we would begin using them. So to be very, very clear, um, it, it does allow discretion to use either planner when we need them. 
and of course staff would obviously look to to um, you know the most cost effective and, and efficient process and choice of planner when needed. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Foster? No question. And Mr. Malloy. Yeah, what, uh, just, I'm just curious. What would transpire that we would need another? Uh, let Mr. Roberts uh, speak to that. I'm sorry, Your Worship. I couldn't quite understand the question. I couldn't quite hear clearly. What would be a circumstance where we would not use one planner or the other? Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Malloy. Does that capture the question, Mr. Malloy? Certainly, for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Robertson. Um, there, there's quite a, a wide variety of circumstances you can encounter. Everything from, you know, a, a planner being a relative of a person uh, that works for a developer, um, working for another municipality that's uh, involved in some way in, in the development where, you know, it, it interacts with different clients and so forth. It's, um, it's really kind of an unlimited situation that you could encounter, unlimited set of circumstances that you can encounter. Um, there can even be situations of, of legal matters where a planner is, is testifying in an LPAT appeal uh, against a developer that is proposing a second development in the municipality, that type of thing. Okay, thank you. But, uh, did you have a, another question, Mr. Malloy? And, and, and so, what are the circumstances? You mentioned that you, you mentioned that there was a, a situation in the village. What are the circumstances there? Uh, thank you, Worship. So, be, before I could get into individual circumstances surrounding conflicts of interest, we we would need to have that discussion in council in in camera, sir. Okay, so, so nothing can, we can talk about. Sorry, could we, uh, we, uh, you broke up a bit, Mr. Malloy. Could you repeat your question? General, that that we can we can speak of, Mr. Robertson. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Worship. I'm having difficulty uh, hearing Councilor Malloy. Well, it's okay. Never mind. Okay. There, I guess uh, some substance that there are circumstances that there could be. Would it be fair to use the word a, a conflict with a planner dealing with? A particular uh, development uh, that uh, it, it's what, what staff are putting forward the fact that we, we would have in place, if you will, an alternate uh, consultant planner to uh, to utilize under a circumstance of that nature. Is that a fair way to word it, Mr. Robertson? That's correct, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very much. one more one more quick Sorry. question. What yes. brought us to IBI, Mr. Boyd? Go ahead. What brought the municipality to, to IBI? Mr. Robertson. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. So um, we've actually, this was um, uh, our, our, the third planning firm that we landed to that did not have a conflict uh, with one of the projects that we were looking at. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, gentlemen, you've heard uh, you had your questions. Uh, you've heard the motion. I'll go around the table asking for support of the motion for uh, the staff to execute, execute a contract for municipal planning services with the IBI group. And uh, are you in favor, of Mr. Helpty? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Cameron. Yes. And Mr. Foster. Yes. And Mr. Malloy. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. The motion is carried. And next, uh, gentlemen, uh, on our agenda is a discussion regarding the, the council meeting uh, resolution, more specifically uh, the time of council meetings at, uh, of the motion that was back in January uh, of this year and uh, going to 2 o'clock meetings uh, from 7 o'clock meetings. And that was a uh, suggestion was brought forward by Mr. Healthy. Uh, council's approach was that uh, during the uh, well, I'll read the, the significant part. Uh, in in part, is uh, directing that uh, the regular meetings that will be held uh, starting January 25th, 20th of this year, uh, and, and uh, starting at two o'clock, continuing until such time as the requirements set out by the province be lifted, so that the village may once again safely accommodate the public uh, physically attending the meetings. And uh, from my perspective, uh, the meetings at two o'clock 
uh, they are uh, live streamed, and uh, and uh, notwithstanding that, as soon as the meeting is over, uh, the the audio is pe- posted on the on the website. So to me, it, it it's uh, um, the fact that there are two o'clock is uh, affording the uh, that, that openness, the transparency, if you will, uh, to the public to hear at two o'clock if if they're able to, and if they're not able to at two o'clock, they'd hear it at. Uh, at seven o'clock, and 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 when we are able to uh, accommodate you know, the uh, folks uh, uh, in public, we go back to the seven o'clock time. So I don't know if there's a desire to uh, to uh, reconsider that motion. Um, the, you know, a, again, it's the uh, it's probably um, <laughs> probably in a way. Uh, more uh, accessibility in, in, in an odd way to the public, given that we're meeting at two o'clock and it's live streamed at two o'clock. Uh, typically, if you have a meeting at seven o'clock, if you're not hearing it at seven o'clock, you're going to listen to it sometime the next day, I suppose, as opposed to earlier the day when the meeting isn't taking place. So, are there any? Uh, I know this was uh, your motion initially, uh, and Mr. Ken, uh, sorry, Mr. Halpin was supported. Uh, Mr. I think Mr. Cameron, I think if I have the right uh, individual, uh, su- suggested we might go back to the uh, seven o'clock meetings. I guess I would say, sir, given that we're live stream now, uh, right at two o'clock, uh, there's no delay, if you will, for people to listen to the council meeting at seven o'clock because we're having it at two o'clock. It seems like an odd way for me to say it, but nonetheless, there you have it. Uh, any anything you wanted to uh, say, Mr. Cameron? Yeah, well, the, the whole purpose intent is to allow uh, public access. Uh, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there's still people that are working, so they're yep. not uh, able to access uh, council uh, debates and live stream. And the, the, when we pass the motion to go to an electronic uh, format, the, the whole idea was to Zoom format in, in which uh, um, people could log in and uh, physically see the proceedings of council and have the opportunity to uh, uh, raise a question if they had. Uh, so, you know, the seven o'clock meeting, uh, the purpose for that is to allow uh, maximum participation by the public. So uh, I think going back to that format, given the fact that this COVID doesn't seem to be uh, relaxing any any time soon, and, and uh, we're going to be moving forward in electronic mode some way, shape, or form over the next six months to a year. So initially, you know, people have hadn't had not had any contact with uh, council directly. So uh, I think we need to move back to that format. I think uh, being inclusive with the community is something that we need to reestablish. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, uh, question or comments from other members of council? And I'll go around the table. Uh, Mr. Foster? No, not uh, really. I, as far as what time of day we do it or in the afternoon, the, the 2 p.m. meeting seems to work all right at the moment. Uh, as far as public participation, uh, do, is there a way we can uh, encourage the public to send their questions in to be uh, perhaps refer to it the next meeting, because I, I don't see how going on Zoom or anything will actually change what we're doing. Uh, the telephone seems to work fine, uh, but as far as public participation, I'm not sure how changing the time of the meeting would allow them to participate uh, anymore. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Malloy, any questions or comments? No, thank you, sir. And Mr. Halpy, any questions or comments? Yeah, I don't see any problem in uh, changing now. Uh, we still have the, uh, the bug going around, so I'd say we stay with 2 o'clock. Thank you. Uh, so I'm not hearing any appetite to, to change uh, the motion. Uh, interesting comment in terms of uh, questions on the on the agenda at the time of the council meeting, and uh, uh, it's certainly not meant to be a, a dangling item. But uh, perhaps staff could bring back at the uh, at our next council meeting uh, how that might be uh, addressed. 
again, you know, whether it's Zoom uh, visibly or, or, you know, the, the Zoom uh, telephone or teleconference, uh, to see how that might be, uh, might be accommodated. So uh, uh, we'll give that direction to the staff, and uh, given that there isn't any change or is there not a motion uh, for reconsideration uh, on the table, uh, we'll take this as information, and and again underscore from my perspective, uh, the fact that it's at uh, at two o'clock is actually um, uh, affords uh, what's it, affords the opportunity to listen. If you're not uh, at work, and I'm not going to suggest people at work might be listening, uh, but you know whether it's at two o'clock, but immediately that the meeting is over. Uh, again, the recording is, is on the website, so if you don't get off work until seven o'clock tonight, you can listen to it right away. Uh, there you go. But we'll uh, we'll see about that that uh, how that might work in terms of uh, uh, if there are any questions uh, uh, at the end, the c- conclusion of a, uh, of a of a council meeting. If there are any questions uh, and and how that might work. Uh, so we'll leave that with staff. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for the. Uh, discussion and move on under, uh, under bylaws. Uh, we do have a uh, uh, motion for uh, consideration of a signed bylaw. Uh, to my knowledge, we've never had, uh, there is not an existing uh, uh, bylaw uh, re- regarding flags. Uh, over the years, I know from uh, just from experience, there have been occasions uh, where, uh, you know, a uh, Sitting member of, of, of council uh, passes and, and the flags are, are lowered and so on. And uh, I believe staff have uh, looked around at a number of uh, municipalities rather than starting from a blank piece of paper and uh, brought forward a uh, policy for uh, council's consideration. Uh, so before I actually uh, read the motion, uh, I'll go around the table and ask if there are any uh, questions on the uh, proposed flag uh, policy. Mr. Malloy, do you have any questions? Yeah, it comes from page three under disposal of flags. Can you just give us a moment. Yes, go ahead. You're quick. Okay, so I understand all the cutting up and everything like that. But then I'm just a little curious about the, uh, where it says the individual pieces should then be placed in a bag for disposal. I assume you mean garbage. I and that. Unappropriate. I, 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 I always thought that the uh, flags should, should be would be burnt. I'm not sure, uh, uh, Mr. Robertson. Are you able to uh, to respond to that? Um, thank you, Worship, and thank you, Councillor Malloy. Um, that is what we saw in the other um, flag policies in the other municipalities. So it seemed to be the normal practice. Um, I, I, we assumed that it reflected uh, sort of a national approach in those specific incidences dealing with synthetic material. Um, we'd be happy to look further into that to see if we can research it and find out the, you know, just kind of confirm that understanding and perhaps see if we can even find out some rationale for that approach, but that is what we found. Okay. Yeah, uh, fair, fair enough, but, but I, I, I'm, I, I, I don't, I, I somehow can't come to grips with that. I, I just don't think uh, we, we should be throwing our flags, no matter how small the how small the pieces are, into the garbage. Just to brought away with other stuff. I think we should be holding of them in some sort of fat. Uh, and I always thought it was burnt them. Yeah. So, it, uh, on the assumption that the council is supportive of the uh, the policy, uh, staff could bring back, uh, if you will, uh, for information, clarity on. Uh, what that appro- what that appropriate disposal is, and, and if necessary, uh, you know, add the wording, uh, you know, for clarity, whether it's burning or, or, or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, of- I may just point one more thing. If you just go up to the top of the page under five point one, it says it should be destroyed in a dignified way. Yeah. Five point five point two doesn't seem dig- doesn't seem to present a dignified way. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah. So what, again, whether it's uh, an addendum or just clarify the wording, that can be uh, that can be done uh, moving forward. Um, Mr. Foster, any questions? Uh, no, I just wanted to point out to uh, Councillor Boy that the uh, wording in, the, uh, in this bylaw is identical to the uh, Government of Canada website. Uh, really? Yeah. 
I'm on the Government of Canada website right now, disposal of flags, it's it's word for word. Uh, when it talks about flags made of natural fiber should be in a dignified manner, synthetic materials should be respectfully torn into strips, etc., etc. Uh, individual pieces should then be placed in a bag for disposal. And that's the Government of Canada, uh, Canada.ca's uh, website. So uh, this is directly from that. So. I guess if we can we can refer to the federal government on this issue. Well, I guess they got that wrong then. <laughs> well, we're not sure about wrong, but there is it is not uh, clarity. At any rate, I'm not sure whether staff would be able to find it anymore. But uh, any questions in terms from a, uh, a policy perspective, uh, Mr. Foster? No, no. I, I think this is uh, this covers the. Policy very well, certainly, and as I say, it's in complete agreement with the uh, Government of Canada website. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Cameron? Uh, just uh, whether or not we actually need a bylaw. I mean, a, a policy uh, may be all that we need, but it, uh, whether we go with a bylaw or a policy, there's no indication here who we're going to download that responsibility to. I think. Uh, I think that needs to be part of the conversation on uh, who is going to be responsible for maintaining and uh, raising and lowering of the flags when needed uh, to have a person responsible for that. I think uh, that would be something that we should put in into whichever way we go. Yeah. Well, it certainly is a, a policy, and and what you know from a process point of view, the policy is put in the form of a of a bylaw, and uh, given that it would be, uh, it is. Uh, Specifically for uh, village uh, maintained and and controlled, if you will, uh, flag poles. There would be municipal staff uh, that would be responsible for that, and uh, and the, the actual you know, rate, uh, lowering and then raising again would be uh, uh, you know, typically it's uh, quote unquote public works staff. So with the policy in in place uh, when a, uh, a circumstance arises. Uh, there is the the policy for for staff to to follow. So that's that's how that process works. Do you have any questions, Mr. Healthy? No. Okay, then, gentlemen, I'll uh, uh, I'll call the vote. Are you in favor of the uh, flag uh, protocol policy, Mr. Uh, Mr. Healthy? Yes. And Mr. Cameron. Yes. And Mr. Foster. Yes. And Mr. Malloy. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. The motion is carried. And the next bylaw is the uh, an authorization to an ex execute the OSPCA contract. And if I do uh, recall it, it's a contract renewal. Uh, just before I do read the uh, the agreement, I'll just turn to Ms. Uh, Mr. Robertson. Uh, just to clarify, this is a uh, a renewal agreement. Mr. That's, Powell, cor yes. That's correct, Your Worship. Doug Robertson here. If I may, I think um, Chief Cole would have uh, the vast amount of the knowledge that you would require to ask questions about on this, so I'll, I'll just refer to him if they're comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the, the, the first part here is a contract renewal, and that, which is a yes. So I'll <laughs> ask. Yep, thank you. Yeah. And if there are any questions uh, from members, I'll go around the table. Any questions, Mr. Malloy? No, thanks, sir. Mr. Foster? No. Mr. Cameron? No. Mr. Halpney? No. Thank you, gentlemen. So uh, I'll have a mover, uh, Mr. Cameron, a seconder, Mr. Halpney. Be hereby resolve that bylaw 22-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with the Ontario Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals be read a first and second time, and that bylaw 22-2021 be read a third and final time and passed. All in favor? Mr. Helpney? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. And the motion is carried. Thank you. And next time we have our confirmatory bylaw, so the mover, Mr. Foster, and the seconder, Mr. Healthy.
Reviewed hereby resolve that bylaw 21 21, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular council meeting of April the 26th, 2021, be read a first and second time, and the bylaw 21 2021 be read a third and final time and passed. All in favor? Uh, sorry, are you in favor, Mr. Malloy? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Mr. Cameron? Yes. And Mr. Halfney? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. The motion is carried. And this is a motion to adjourn. And if I'm reading my watch correctly, we are at 3.34. Excuse me, one, one, one moment, Your Worship. Yes, Mr. Malloy. Uh, I just have a question for Mr. Robertson. Um, there was a, I noticed a paper about um, uh, memberships to some of our... Uh, are our committees, and I had a, a one one member of, of a committee phone, and they were asking, do the current members have to have to reapply, or is this just looking for replacement members? Yes, the vacancies uh, that we have, Mr. Malloy, the current ones do not have to reapply. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Great. So it's a motion to uh, adjourn, and uh, Mr. Cameron uh, be the mover, and Mr. Malloy be the seconder. Be it hereby resolved that this regular meeting of the Council of the Corporation of the Village of Merrifield Wolford does here does now adjourn at 3.34 p.m. until the next regular meeting of Council on Monday, May the 10th, 2021, at 2 p.m. or until the call of the Mayor is subject to need. It's a non-debatable uh, motion, so the, uh, the Mayor will declare that the motion is carried and we are now adjourned. <laughs>